Mike Quinn joins us now. And hey, Mike, you took a role in Return of the Jedi without even knowing who you're going to play, right? Actually, that's true. How did you know that? It's yeah, research, bud. We uh, we knew that there were a lot of characters and creatures that were coming up. A lot of us were at the uh, studio working on the Dark Crystal for Jim Henson, and they were in pre-production at Elstree for Jedi. So Robert Watts interviewed a bunch of us puppeteers, Tim Rose and Toby Philpot and a few others uh, to be on the picture, and it was as simple as that. So we knew we were we didn't know how long we'd be on it or what we'd be doing, but we knew there were creatures, and that was it. So it's like good enough. So we kind of had a little blind faith and. We're uh, happy to, to, to be part of it, and it went on from there. Love your creatures, I'm sure. Now, which one did you get uh, awarded first? I say award because it's really like a reward being part of Star Wars. Oh, yeah. We started at the beginning of, I think it was 82, and in fact, I was assisting Tim Rose um, on uh, Sice Noodles. We were rehearsing that while they were shooting the exterior shots of uh, the entrance to Jabba's Palace and that kind of thing. So Jabba's Palace was the first big scene for all the creatures that we shot. So I helped him with, uh, we rehearsed uh, Snoodles, and there were two versions of her that we, one for a wide shot and one for a close up that we rehearsed. And then we shot on, on uh, Jabba's palace. Um, I also did the little slug in the archway with the tongue that oh, yeah. was above Jabba's head. Yeah. And, um, and then while they were shooting further scenes on that, we also rehearsed, Tim and I rehearsed Akbar as well, Admiral Akbar. Yeah. So I helped him with that as well. So that was a two man role, Admiral Akbar. Well, it was it was a one-man role with an assistant. Let's put it that way. But yes, uh, so but he was the principal performer, and I did cables for the different versions of him: the close-up and the wide shot, mouth things and the eyeballs and that sort of stuff. Tim and I worked together a lot on a lot of projects. Then uh, what was next? We had the um, the Ewok Village came along at some point, so I did a baby Ewok, oh, right. and the Wokling, yeah. and. Um, Yes, it was, it was good to, to be able to go to walk every day. <laughs> oh, um, I did the little grey one with the mother that uh, when, when 3PO was telling the story, he gets scared, you know, it was, it was about this big, little tiny thing. Uh, so that was nice, of course, you know. Um, I think that was the largest gathering of little people under one roof since The Wizard of Oz, like 50 of them. And uh, I was little then too, so I guess I was almost, uh, I would almost count. What else? Um, well, let's talk about the character you're signing for in particular here today. Uh, oh, yes. Yeah, what's his name? He's, he is actually called Nine Num, Nine Num. And the reason that is is because uh, on the call sheet when he first appeared, you know, he didn't, before he was in the Falcon, um, he was number nine on the call sheet on the, uh, on the list of creatures. So they changed it from number nine to Nine Num and just changed the N to, uh, M to an N. Where is it? He doesn't have his name up. Well, anyway, yes, so they changed the spelling and that was it. So, yeah. Well, tell us about the production of it, because I think I've read that it's like a, a creation that requires three puppeteers to make it work. Essentially, yeah, in the cockpit, people don't always realise, but he was actually a hand puppet, like a big Muppet. Um, and uh, because he had to have articulation and good lip sync and good head direction and, and attitude and that kind of thing, body language, uh, we actually, I suggested that they convert one of the masks into a hand puppet. T Phil Tippett was heading up the creature shop for that. And he said, you know, that's a good idea. So we did a screen test um, with a, a mocked up hand puppet of this for, for George Lucas and he directed. And um, he said, yeah, you know what, that's good. And I even um, suggested they wiggle the ears with an, an ear mechanism and they built that in as well and eye blinks. And they shipped it off to uh, ILM to uh, uh, finish the mechanizing. And it came back two weeks later, uh, fully mechanized. And, and we shot it, they had to cut out the seat of the Falcon for me to hide it inside and they would lift the puppet onto me in, in the cockpit and away we went. So that's how it worked. That's incredible. It looks like there's no room in that cockpit. And like Chewbacca is in there or is he? Because uh, he's pretty big himself. Well, that's it. I had to, to uh, vacuum the, uh, the, the seat from all the Wookiee hairs first, of course, you know, and there were a few, a few fleas and that kind of thing. Oh. But uh, we, got it, we got it fumigated okay and uh, there was plenty of room for me. So, but they had to cut the bottom of the seat away and just leave the seat back and they were kind of nervous about doing that because it was the only one, you know, this is the Falcon, right? Yeah, Are you sure we want to be doing this, Governor? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, it was great, you know, so I had a little TV monitor so I could see what the camera saw and uh, yeah, thrust my arm in the air and off we went. And of course they rocked the Falcon around like crazy to simulate flight. And I got bad motion sickness on that thing just because it was, all I could see was what the camera sees. It's like being on a simulator ride from my point of view. 
So a few days of that and you get a little queasy, you know. Where's the drama mean, you know? And there was another character that uh, is in your resume, really, that is very similar to this one. Who was that character? There is. <laughs> uh, did, yeah, didn't he have a, like a white costume on, a flight suit? Oh, you're talking about ten um, bum bum bum. How do they come up with these names? Yeah, it's incredible. <laughs> you're correct, though. Um, we actually shot um, him in a uh, B-wing cockpit because in the flights, uh, the battle uh, scene at the end, you see a lot of B-wings flying around in the exteriors, but you never see inside. And we actually, it was the same puppet, but it, yeah, he had a white suit and that's other little helmet on and we've seen uh, toys of him as a, as a, as a rebel pilot but uh, we, shot, we shot footage it just, it's, it, I think it's in the Lucasfilm archive somewhere so if enough people ask maybe they can dig it out uh, but uh, yeah it, it ended up on the cutting room floor they just didn't need it for pacing and, and yeah. that kind of thing but well, there'll there. always be re-releases so I'm sure yes. eventually it'll come out as a uh, deleted scene I would love to think so I'd love to think so another thing I was always a big fan of Yoda so t I got to help Frank to do Yoda with his right hand, which was, it was a little part, but it was really fun. I mean, Frank was very meticulous about the acting moments, and we rehearsed that very carefully, and we had a blast on set with Mark, and, you know. So just to, just to clarify there, you were operating the arm? He's right, yeah. Frank would do the head and the left arm. Someone else would do the eyes. I think uh, Dave Greenaway did the eyes on cables. Dave Barkley did the ears, and I did the right hand. So it was a five-man team. Man, that's impressive to know. And also, I believe I've read that uh, there was a bit of work with Jabba the Hutt as well. Oh, yes, that's right. Yeah, I helped when Jabba was being strangled by uh, Leia in the sail barge. Um, I was inside with uh, Dave Barkley and Toby Philpott doing the eyes bulging and all that. And the whole fiberglass structure was creaking and cracking. And I thought the whole thing was going to fall apart on us. And battery packs were falling on my head. It was very exciting, very dramatic for us on the inside. <laughs> And you must have been uh, pretty close with Carrie Fisher in the slave layer gear, yeah? Well, close enough, but, uh, you know, <laughs> we're all professionals and we focus on our work. And uh, actually, she was very nice. Everybody was, was very friendly, Harrison and, and Mark, you know. Uh, we were all just about getting our job done, and, and uh, it was a great experience to be on, on the set. It was a real thrill. So. Sure, sure, Mike, sure. <laughs> You've got the wife here, Jerry, sitting right My next lovely, to you. So. lovely, oh. <laughs> You've got to be careful what you say. Hi, good to see you, Jerry. Thank you. And Mike, look, we're going to say so much thanks to you too. You're so many characters in the Star Wars universe. It's just Thank awesome you. to talk to you. And I also did some animation on episode two. Might as well get that in too. Tell us so more. You know. That's right. You went from puppeting, <laughs> puppeteering to animation. That was a big change in your life, I'm sure. In, in, in a way, but it's still bringing something to life. It's just in a, in a slower way. You know, it's more like doing, doing your accounts or taxes or something because it's a much slower process. Sure. But you're still trying to bring an inanimate object to life. So, yes, I, I started out at Pixar with that uh, on Toy Story 2 as a character animator. So I still animate now and I puppeteer. So it's kind of cool. But uh, so is that everybody in Australia there? That's them all. Say hello. Oh, hello. Well, there's a lot of you there. Gosh. <laughs> I'll see you later. <laughs> awesome, Mike. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Cheers.